Assalamu alaikum this is Dr. Hasna with Hasna's Natmi and today we are beginning a new region of the lower limb. We've already discussed the various compartments of the thigh. Today we will discuss the gluteal region which is the most requested region for my channel. So basically the gluteal region lies on the side and the back of your pelvis. So let's go ahead and get started. To begin with the gluteal region basically consists of a large amount of subcutaneous fat. It has a superficial fascia and deep fascia like all other region and then it has multiple muscles and today I'm going to tell you about these muscles as there are quite many of them. I will give you a brief overview of all of them. So the major most important muscle is the gluteus maximus which covers the majority of the gluteal region all right. Lying deep to the gluteus maximus is your gluteus medius and lying deep to even the gluteus medius is the gluteus minimus. Let's talk about the layer of the gluteus medius. Let's suppose we've removed the gluteus maximus out of the way. What is the order of arrangement of muscles from above downwards which is very important to know is that after the gluteus medius comes your piriformis muscle and we've already talked about how the sciatic nerve pa passes right below it. Just below the piriformis let's imagine that this is the hip bone and this is your basic your femur bone all right all these muscles are coming from the hip bone and going towards your femur side all right then comes the two jamilae the superior jamilus and the inferior jamilus and between the two is the tendon of obturator internus all right this is the superior jamilus this is the inferior jamilus this comes from the upper part of the lesser sciatic notch and this comes from the lower part of the lesser sciatic notch Then beneath this comes the quadratus femoris muscle, all right, the quadratus femoris. Other muscle includes the obturator externus. Let's talk about the various uh, nerve supplies and functions of these muscles because that's quite important. Overall, all of these muscles are responsible for lateral rotation of your thigh. The gluteus maximus is the chief muscle that causes extension of hip. So when you are about to stand up from a sitting position the major muscle acting during that is the gluteus maximus hence if the gluteus maximus gets paralyzed the person will have a difficulty standing up hence the person will climb up on himself when he has to stand up from a sitting position then we have the gluteus medius and minimus here is where we are going to talk about a very important topic and it is the paralysis of these two. What happens? Before we get into that, it is necessary to know that the gluteus maximus is supplied by the inferior gluteal nerve which is completely committed to the gluteus maximus and only supplies it. The gluteus minimus and the medius are supplied by the superior gluteal nerve. Gluteus medius and minimus have a very important action uh, in addition to the fact that they are powerful abductors of the thigh. Let's discuss the function of gluteus medius and minimus because this is a very important concept especially when we'll talk about its paralysis. So we have the two muscles called the gluteus medius and minimus. Most important function is what? That when a person's foot is off the ground or unsupported foot the, the gluteus medius and minimus of the supported side you can say let's imagine my hand is going to represent these two muscles. So when the person's foot is off the ground they support the pelvis of the opposite side so that it does not fall down due to gravity. Let's suppose that this is the right side this is basically resting on the ground while we have lifted the left foot off the ground this is the pelvis. My hand will represent the gluteus medius and minimus of the right side. So what they do when the leg is off the ground, they make sure that the pelvis is elevated so that the pelvis does not drop, all right? So they are basically holding the pelvis in the elevated position on the opposite side while the limb is unsupported. So this is their major function, all right? They maintain the balance of the pelvis. In case the gluteus medius or minimus are damaged, what will happen? 
the normal abductor mechanism will get deranged. So what is the normal abductor mechanism at the hip? The mechanism that is basically maintaining the balance of the pelvis at the hip. And the normal abductor mechanism of the hip to be intact, there are three factors that come to play in producing the normal abductor mechanism. The first factor is that the gluteus medius and minimus are functioning at their optimum. The second factor that affects the abductor mechanism is the relation of head of the femur to the acetabulum, meaning the hip joint. The hip joint should be intact in order to maintain a normal abductor mechanism. And the third point that comes into play is the weight transmission. All right, so if any of these factor gets deranged then the entire abductor mechanism gets deranged and it results in the hip bone to lose balance in this case we are talking about the gluteus medius and minimus if the gluteus medius and minimus get paralyzed your normal abductor mechanism is lost superior gluteal nerve damage now superior gluteal nerve is basically supplies these two muscles hence if the superior gluteal nerve is damaged or gluteus medius or minimus gets get paralyzed due to any reason what happens is that suppose they are right sided gluteus medius minimus are paralyzed what will happen is now they will not be able to support the limb of the opposite side as i said they are required to elevate the pelvis of the opposite side when they cannot do that then what will happen when you lift the foot off the ground and the right side medius minimus are paralyzed, the pelvis will drop to the normal side. This is called a positive Trendelenburg's sign. This is basically when there is right sided paralysis to the abductor mechanism, more specifically gluteus medius minimus undergo paralysis. What will happen is that the pelvis of the normal side will drop when when the foot of the opposite side is lifted off the ground all right so that is a positive trendelenburg sign not only does it come positive in the gluteus medius minimus paralysis but even if there is any kind of dislocation of the hip joint anterior or posterior dislocation the normal relationship of head and acetabulum is also deranged. Hence, this will also affect the abductor mechanism and the hip will lose the balance. Positive Tendelenburg sign will be observed. And if the weight transmission due to any fracture of neck of femur is deranged, then also the similar sign will be observed. Okay, so this is one sign that you can detect to actually diagnose that there is something wrong with the normal abductor mechanism of the hip joint. However, there are other signs that you can also see in the patient that will tell you that there is something wrong with the medius minimus or any of these factors. And what are those signs? These are the gates. Now, what is a gate? Gate is basically how a person walks. A normal gate is how any normal person like yourself who's watching the video, you walk. However, an abnormal gait is when there is something abnormal going on in the body. So in case of paralysis of gluteus medius minimus, the gait that will be observed will be called the lurching gait. Now what does lurching gait mean? What happens is when the right side gluteus medius minimus are supposed paralyzed so what will the person do when he has to walk and he has to lift his foot off the ground what will happen the pelvis will drop and in order to compensate for this dropping pelvis what will the person do he will bend himself towards the paralyzed side hence this is known as the lurching gait as the patient will walk he will bend towards the paralyzed side that is called lurching gait now this is when there is unilateral paralysis. That means one-sided paralysis. However, if there is a bilateral paralysis, that means both sides abductor mechanisms are deranged, it will result in a very important gate called the waddling gate. Now, the waddling gate is how the patient will bend on both sides. So, when he's walking, he will walk by bending on this side, then he will bend on this side, then he will bend on this side, and that is how he will basically walk. 
Apart from this, there are other gates that can take place when any of the normal abductor mechanism is uh, deranged. What are those gates? The compensatory gates that a person does to lift his pelvis so that it does not drop are the high stepping gate. What is the high stepping gate? When the person will walk, he will take very high steps. And there is another compensatory gate that takes place in these conditions. This is known as the swinging gate. In this gate, he will walk in a manner in which he will be swinging his foot off the ground. So this was a very important concept related to the normal abductor mechanism and the gluteus medius and minimus and how they played a role to this mechanism contributing to the gait of person. I really hope you understood today's lecture. Do not forget to subscribe to Hasnaznatmi. Thank you so much for watching.